Hi, Dennis. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. It's great to have you here. I wanted to know a little bit more about your journey. Uh, what was your life like? Uh, where, where did you come from? How did you come about becoming a roboticist? Wow. <laughs> where do I start? Well, first of all, I'm a professor at UCLA. I'm a professor in the mechanical and aerospace engineering department and the director of Romella, the Robotics and Mechanisms Laboratory, also at UCLA. Uh, I was born not too far from here in Paulus Fertis near LA, uh, but our family moved to Seoul, South Korea when I was three years old. And I actually grew up and I was educated in Korea. And I went to Korea University on my junior year. I came back to the States. Uh, so I graduated from Wisconsin-Madison, and then I got my master's and PhD at Purdue University. And right after I got my PhD, Virginia Tech hired me as a professor. So I started up my lab, Romella, there, and I was a professor there for about 11 years. And then in UCLA, uh, which is the school that I currently uh, go to, uh, so we're starting something really exciting in robotics. We're setting up a new robotics institute. So I was actually recruited, and it's actually been seven years since I joined UCLA. So I'm here right now. Quite the trajectory. What is it that got you into robotics to start out? Oh, <laughs> this is cool. This is a true story. So when I was seven years old, uh, I watched the movie Star Wars for the first time. Right? Everybody loves Star Wars. Uh, the, the first episode was episode four, uh, New Hope. And, you know, when I was seven years old as a kid, I was watching the movie. I still remember that excitement, all the lightsabers and the spaceship and all the, uh, the robots. I was so excited on my way back home in the car after the movie, I told my mom and dad, when I grow up, I'm going to be a roboticist and I follow my dream and I'm here today. So if you look at the, uh, uh, in the, the movie Star Wars, there's two particular robots, droids, right? You probably know C-3PO, the human robot and R2-D2, the one that looks like a uh, trash can. And I was really, really fascinated by these robots. So if you look very closely at the robotics work that we do, you can see somehow some of the, the, sh the things that uh, in R2D and C3PO in there. Like for example, uh, we build many different type of robots uh, from rolling, climbing, walking, two legs, five legs, six legs robots. And we really focus on novel locomotion, new ways of moving, not just walking with two legs, not just rolling. So if you remember R2D2 with three legs, it rolls, can walk with two feet, it is multimodal locomotion. And I think subconsciously I was actually influenced by R2D2's, uh, those kind of local locomotion that actually had an impact on my work. On the other hand, C3PO is a humanoid robot. And I think I was really fascinated by uh, how human-like robots interact with people. Like this is a robot called uh, Darwin, open source uh, humanoid robot. This is called Charlie, you've probably seen it. These are very famous, iconic robots that we developed from uh, Thor, Thor or uh, uh, RD, a disaster relief robots, and these days we're focusing on human robots. And I think I had a, a, a pretty big uh, influence uh, from uh, Star Wars uh, in doing these kind of things. So you're really taking the inspiration from Star Wars to the extreme, going to the real world and producing some of these robots. And I'd heard of Star Wars inspirations before, but I think you go even a step further. So how has Star Wars really influenced you beyond what you've already told us? Oh yeah, again, I'm, I'm really living my dream. Again, this is my occupation, Try building robots, developing robots. I had this dream since I was seven years old, but it actually goes beyond just my robotics work. Uh, this is my son, he, his name is Ethan, and he also loves ro robotics, Star Wars. Uh, that uh, uh, picture that you see right over there, that's the uh, Mad's Chinese Theater in, 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 in Hollywood. And that's the place that I first uh, saw Star Wars. And there's a footprint from the real R2-D2 and C-3PO. Uh, we went there. Uh, we're just having too much fun. Of course, I have all the, uh, the plastic models. I'm dead serious. Uh, also, <laughs> I do all the uh, airbrushing painting. Uh, also, we have most all Star Wars Legos as well. Ethan is a huge a Lego fan. I'll tell you a secret. Actually, I made Ethan like Star Wars because I, I wanted to get all the toys. So yeah, that, that, that's the excuse. <laughs> I <love it. laughs> so I love it. Um, not only that, but we also a lot of a lot of a lot of fun. Like for example, when we bought Ethan's new furniture, we have these cardboard boxes, and instead of throwing it away, we build this full size. Um, X-Wing fighter with two uh, wings. That's pretty intricate. And I'll show you a quick video clip of how we play at home. Oh, I'd love Check to this out. Oh, by the way, do you hear sound? Oh, I do, yeah. Full on experience. Good. How is the RT unit? <laughs> so it has lights, <laughs> right? It's actually interactive uh, uh, experience. Ventilator, 
Ready? We're going to Jakku. Jakku scenario run. It's amazing. <laughs> I want one of those. That's yeah, cool. so we also do projection and we try to make stories out of these things so we can play together. So this is what we do. Um, and this is, I think this is a Halloween. Uh, this is a cooking bowl. We, I painted that and made it R2D2. And then that cardboard uh, X-Wing fighter, we actually painted it and made a really big X-Wing fighter for uh, Halloween. So this is, oh, this is last year's Halloween. Let me show you last year's Halloween. Oh, sorry. Okay, this is last year's Halloween. So this is in front of a house. We have all special effects and you know sm smoke machines and uh, music. All the kids just envy uh, us. They always, uh, this is a hot spot in our, our neighborhood. <laughs> That's amazing. You put me to shame. I was so proud of the cardboard autonomous car I, I built under lockdown for my two-year-old. Uh, but it, oh, that's pretty cool. Practice to do. That's amazing. Yeah. So going, yeah, going beyond uh, just playing. It really because. Star Wars really inspired me since I was a kid. I also want to have this kind of a, a positive impact of, you know, I wanted Ethan to dream, right? So this is Ethan's room. This is last year. I painted it, have full size, you know, decals and things. And uh, this is where he sleeps all night, uh, every night. So just imagine every night when he goes to bed, he sees this and what kind of dream uh, would he dream? This is, this, this is really important to me and really uh, close to my heart. It's amazing. Did, did it work? Is he into robotics? Does he see this as the future? <laughs> well, he likes a lot of things, right? Uh, uh, but yeah, he, he's, uh, he started learning coding. He actually built a Star Wars uh, arcade game, which is pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, and he's starting to learn. And I, I'm, you know, I'm very glad that I'll be able to help him if he really wants to jump into robotics too. That's amazing. So I've heard the Star Wars inspiration from many roboticists. What I, I haven't mm. heard often is roboticists being chefs. Do you want to tell us about uh, that? Ah, yes. I am also a pretty dead serious gourmet chef. As a matter of fact, every day at home, I'm the chef I cook at home. Uh, you know, you want to see some of my creations. This is a uh, Show you some. This is my home. This is my actually my old home. So I'll, uh, uh, these are some of my creations when I invite people, uh, friends, family over. I have like six course, eight course degustation menus and things like that. Uh, I have a pretty big follower on Instagram and uh, Facebook. I have like 50,000 followers on Facebook and trying to find my, I post my cooking videos and stuff as well. I was on MasterChef USA <laughs> season four. So uh, it's a cooking show, right? There's a lot of fun things I can, I know I want to talk about, but I don't think we have a lot of time. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I brought one of my, ro we've actually built a robot called Carl, culinary assistive robotic limb. We build a specific robot to be my sous chef on this show. And everybody knows uh, um, Gordon Ramsay, he's uh, the head judge. And after he ate the food that we cooked, he said, Dennis, you are brilliant. <laughs> but after that, I got cut off so that's it <laughs> so that led to some big, pretty big things now we actually have a multi-million dollar research project of building a real cooking robot the master chef song we just did it for fun right but that led to uh sponsored by a, a company called wua brothers we're building a uh really interesting cooking robot system and unfortunately because it's a fund from a company i cannot you know talk too much about it yet but we're cooking up something really, really exciting is the cooking an escape? It sounds like it's still part of work with these robotics elements. Yeah, if you look at the, the things that I do, uh, roboticist, right? I build robots. I'm a magician too, by the way, magician, doing performing magic, cooking. Uh, you know, I also do consulting uh, for designing theme parks at uh, theme park rides. If you think about it, all of these things have no connections, but there is actually something very, very crucial to all of these four things. Do you know what that is? Mm -hmm. Dreaming, yes. It's also making people happy, right? I found that that I am most happy when I make people happy. I perform magic tricks and surprise people. I cook delicious food and I share with my friends and family. I design, help design amusement park rides to give happiness to people. And robotics is the same thing. Robotics, not only just for happiness, but really to improve the quality of life. That's what we do. And that's truly what I believe in. And that's why I do what I do. Great goal for robotics. Are there any of your robotics projects that have made you happy? Things that you're particularly proud of? 
Oh, everything. All, well, it's also a big pain, as you all know, Dave, because they always break and always fail. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I am living my dream. So if you look at, if you follow some of our research work, uh, I'm in a, our lab, Romel, is a little bit special because normally a robotics or a scholar has one specific area and a deep, deep, deep knowledge and experience. We do many, many different things. Uh, I really started my career as a roboticist uh, uh, working with autonomous vehicles. So back in 2007, you probably remember the DARPA Urban Challenge, the autonomous vehicle race. Our team won third place and that really put us on the map. So I started with autonomous vehicles and now autonomous becomes becomes a hot thing and everybody does it. Then it becomes not that fun. So I move out and start something different. So from the technology we developed from the autonomous vehicle, we developed the world's very first car for the visually impaired. So this is not a car that drives a blind person around. This is a car where a blind person makes active decisions and drive. It has to do with more of a non-visual user interface. Uh, and then I move on to chemically actuated robots, wheel leg hybrid robots, jumping, hopping, rolling, climbing, human robots, all different types of things. So, you know, I do so many different things, but all of them are fun. I truly believe that we're, you know, uh, providing something great to the society to make the world a better place. It might sound cheesy, but that's truly what I believe in. I think that's what drives many of us. And it, it sounds mm -hmm. like you're not making your life easy by, by exploring these new avenues, but that is what keeps <laughs> it exciting. When is it hard? What are some of the challenges you face? Because even though Ooh. happiness is the aim, you know, there's also yes. difficulty. Oh, of course, we always fail. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of roboticists are watching this, uh, you know, especially if you actually build things and do experiments. These are, you're trying to create something that did not exist before. Many times the components of things you have to build yourself and these, you know, hard forces that impact, they always break and fail. Sensors go crazy in different environments. Uh, but the cool thing is that if, you've, if you know some of the robots that we created, uh, everybody agrees that the, these systems that we create are really ingenious. It's very creative. Uh, we're the very first to do certain new type of things. And this creativity comes from the fact that we are, our lab, we are not afraid of failure. As a matter of fact, I tell our students to try to make the robots go faster, try to make it lift, uh, lift heavier things. And I actually tell the students to try to break the robot. Because if your robot doesn't fall and doesn't break, you don't get to learn anything. So that's our culture. Uh, failure is okay, right? Actually, it, we don't encourage failure, but it's okay. It's just, we understand that, well, it's a learning process and that's how we go to success. That's what we do in our lab. And so that's a great message for the young roboticists. Is, is there anything you would tell your younger self uh, about a career in robotics? Uh, <laughs> Uh, sure. So I talked about not being afraid of failure, which is true. And that's, uh, you know, as a director of our lab, that's also my responsibility to cult uh, cultivate that kind of culture. But, you know, just saying it's okay to break the robot, it's okay to fail. That's not the true message. You have to be smart about failure. If you, you analyze, you think, and if you think there's a chance, high chance it's, gonna, it's going to fail, then do something about it. Mm -hmm. Failure is okay, but fail, make it fail safe. If you're doing ex uh, experiment, the robot's walking and you think it's gonna fall down, that's fine. Then try to make, have a, you know, a safety belay cord or have some padding. So fail said, think before, it's a, a fail smart. That's the message that I want to uh, give to my young self as well. <laughs> I have so many students who are doing robots from home now because of COVID. And so that, that yeah. whole fail safe puts things in a whole other perspective. <laughs> Don't do this at home, kids, literally. Yes. Um, that's amazing. So um, do you have, uh, Given these different areas you've explored, the tremendous success of your lab, where, where do you see the next frontier in robotics? And I know it's always hard to answer these questions, but. Uh, okay, so my next project, frontier. Well, it's really, so as I mentioned, we do all different type of robotics, from autonomous vehicles, uh, car for the blind, chemically actuated robots, walking robots, climbing, jumping robots. And a lot of people actually ask me that question, what's your next project? Now, I have right over here on my uh, bookcase, I have a shelf with my idea notebook. Since I was a student, I always come up with different ideas. I put, you know, sketches on it. And whenever there's a call for proposal from research funding agencies, I take out my notebook from 10 years ago and I flip through. And if there's a good match, that's when I write a research proposal and we get the funding and we make it a research project. So 
really don't know what my next project is going to be because it all has to do with the timing. You know, the, the, you know, I have a bunch of ideas, but what, I only take them out when it's the right timing. So what's that going to be? I do not know. However, one thing that I definitely know I can promise you is that whatever that project is going to be, is going to be a project to really benefit the society and make the, a, a better the humankind. That I can promise you. Right, robots to benefit society. I think that's a beautiful note to finish. Thanks so much, Dennis, for joining the show today. Thank you so thanks for having me.